Of Apples and Magic by Leisure Pony. Of Ropes, Rodeos, and Cow Ponies. Hey, Atwai, Abjack said, smiling as she walked into the castle's reading room, seeing Twilight once more with her muzzle in a book, her wings shifting slightly, an ear twitching as she heard her mare friend's voice. How's my beautiful mare? Oh, hey, sexy, what's up? Twilight asked as she turned from her book and looked up at the other mare, who was standing in the doorway and leaning against the frame. Applejack came over to the study table Twilight was sitting in front of, joining her in saying there, Earth ponies have a number of erogenous zones, but the most sensitive ones, generally speaking, are the frogs of the hoof, also more commonly known as the underhoof, the ears, and most commonly, the back legs, more specifically the stiffles in the QE mark area. She read aloud from the book Twilight was studying. Finding it must be an earth pony anatomy book, and one of a rather sultry nature it would seem, complete with some quaint graphic diagrams that left nothing to the imagination. Oh yeah, after what we did last week I kinda decided to do some studying on other ways we could have some fun in that way. Twilight said, a light tint of deep purple on her cheeks as she was caught out even if she knew Applejack wouldn't mind such a thing, and indeed may encourage it. Well, shucks, Twa. Here you are, studying about ways to please me your best, and here I ain't made a lick of effort in the same way, Applejack said, indeed feeling a bit guilty right now. That's okay, Applejack. I've learned quite a bit about unicorns and pegsile in this matter, too. And it would seem that alicorns, at least from speculation and relation, have the erogenous zones of all races of ponies in the same way they share the traits and abilities of them. I could certainly share that knowledge with you, if you would like. Applejack only smirked. Save it for the bedroom, beautiful, she said, giving a wink. Besides, I came over to invite you to the Appaloosa Rodeo with me. I myself was invited to compete there, and I figured, well, maybe y'all could come cheer me on. Oh yeah? You're gonna invite the others too? Yeah, but I wanted to make sure you could make it first. Ah, I see. Well, I'm sure I can make it, and I'll be glad to cheer you on. When is it? Friday next week. I may have to reschedule some things, but I'll be there. I promise. Thanks, Shug. I love you. I love you too. It had been a week since Applejack had invited Twilight, meanwhile also having invited her other friends as well, and the day for the annual Appaloosan Rodeo had finally arrived. Applejack had been training the past week with Twilight and her other friends always there cheering her on, and she swore their encouragement, especially Twilight's, is what drove her to beat her old personal record on her barrel weaving practice course. Now they stood outside the main arena of the rodeo, having taken a long train ride here and leaving Applejack more than eager to stretch her legs in the competition. It was a few minutes before the first event was to start, and Applejack was actually feeling a bit nervous. She always was before a competition, but now that Twilight, the most important pony in Equestria to her, was watching, that only added an extra edge onto her usual nerves. Oh my gosh, Applejack, I know you're gonna do awesome, Pinkie Pie said, accompanied by a sudden explosion of confetti and a pony horn coming from the hyper pink pony. Where exactly the confetti came from, nobody knew. But they all knew better than to question Pinkie Pie of all ponies. Well, though we are not quite as enthusiastic as Pinkie here, we do all wish you the best of luck, darling. Rarity said, giving an encouraging smile. Thanks, y'all. I'll do my best. Applejack said, giving a tip of her hat and as the giant triangle was rung, telling the competitors to get in position for the first event, the cattle wrangling competition. Well, that's my call. Gotta go. The cows and ponies were assembled on the field after the bell was rung, and after every pony was in position and was given a rope, the rules were stated. All right, for the cow ponies, your goal is to wrangle and hog ties as many cows you can. Cattle, your job is to try and avoid being captured. Well... 
Remember, no fine bucking, hidden, or causing any harm to any pony or cow is allowed. And if any pony or cow is asked to stop at any time, you have to. The announcer said. Applejack looked over to Twilight and her other friends as the timer ticked down, seeing her mare friend give her a huge smile and a whistle of encouragement, making Applejack huff and hunch down in determination as she locked her eyes on the largest bull, Big Bill. She was told by her cousin Brayburn, who was also competing, that this bull would always give a really good fight to any pony who dared to challenge him. It wasn't a pushover by any means. If some pony actually managed to wrangle him successfully, they would get 10 points, as opposed to other cattles giving free to 8 points based on their own traits. As the huge bull saw Applejack's stare locked on him, he returned to smirk as if to say, bring it on. Applejack returned to smirk. The sentiments returned. As the starting bell was rung, the cow scattered and the ponies chased them down, whoops and cheers coming from the crowd as they did. In the resulting chaos, Applejack lost her sights on her targeted bull, but soon locked onto him, and the bull in kind spotted the gamborge orange pony himself. Applejack pawed at the ground and the bull snorted. Applejack got to a gallop as the bull took off again, the farm pony hot on his trail. As the bull turned the sharp corner, Applejack quickly fashioned a lasso from the rope that was once around her withers, gripping the rope tightly between her teeth as she started spinning it above herself. The bull noticed this and quickly changed directions again, making Applejack miss her first throw. She cursed quietly as she quickly gathered the rope and prepared for another throw, this time waiting for the bull to make an evasive maneuver again. As it did just as planned and dodged to the right again, Applejack waited for it to slow a moment from changing directions, its momentum lost, before throwing the rope again. This time the rope struck true, the loop landing over the bull's neck, earning her a triumphant cry from the crowd of friends, her own confidence surging now. Applejack kept pace with the bull twice her size before it sharply turned again, jerking its competitor alongside it and nearly throwing her off balance earning word gasp from her friends and causing her hat to fall off. Applejack quickly regained her hoofing, and as she realized her prized hat was now in the mud, she retaliated with a jerk of her own. Aw, oh, hey no, you didn't respect the hat. She growled out, yanking the bull and actually pulling it off balance. As she saw the bull stumble, Applejack capitalized, yanking again in the other direction, and this time the bull fell to its side, her having used its own strength against it. This turned Applejack another cheer from the crowd, with her especially noticing Twilight above the den of the other voices, and that particular rally making her smile. As the bull scrabbled to get up, Applejack charged to its sides, rolling him onto his back now, his legs splayed in the air as he was forced into a prone position, leaving him dazed. The bull once more tried to get up, but Applejack quickly wrestled him back down and grabbed the length of the rope in her mouth. Jumping atop his chest and wrapping his legs tightly in rope, even as he tried to flail and escape. As the giant bull was felled, the whole crowd erupted in cheers, making Applejack look to Twilight, seeing a huge smile on her face as she met Applejack's eyes, a look of pride on her own. Applejack felt a fluttering in her belly as she climbed off of the bull, showered with the spotlight, and the announcer stating that she had actually felled Big Bill. She then got off of him and walked over to her hat, wiping what little mud had gone on to it and replacing it on its rightful home of her head. As she heard the ending bell ring, Applejack heard a very deep voice right behind her. Congrats, pony. You're the first mare to capture me. Big Bell said, rolling over onto his side. The last pony to capture me was a real big stallion. A Clydesdale, if I remember. Oh, and, uh... Sorry about the hat. Well, shucks. Y'all put up a good fight, Applejack said, giving the defeated bull a smile and a tip of said hat. Applejack quickly untied him. Then she and the bull parted company. The scores were tallied up, and moments the results were handed over to the announcer. In this year's wrangling competition, the results are in. The winner of this competition is... Applejack held her breath, the crowd silent in anticipation. Our very own blazing stirrup of Appaloosa with five captures and twelve points. Applejack sighed as she heard the first place winner wasn't her, 
scuffing a hoof on the ground in disappointment. As a deep brown stallion with a lasso cue marked Troy up on stage and accepted the blue ribbon to great applause. The next placing announcement. And in second place with the additional achievement of the first mayor to ever successfully capture and pin Big Bill is Applejack of Ponyville. Another wave of cheers went up for her as she walked up on stage. Forcing a smile, she felt the silken red ribbon slide over her neck, with an additional golden bullhorns pin on it showing her accomplishment. As she looked over the crowd, her eyes quickly locked onto the lavender alicorn mare she was proud to call her own. Seeing Twilight stamping her applause for Applejack alongside the others, hearing the additional whoops and hollers from her, she knew she didn't deserve it. As the third place and on were announced and the named ponies came to stage, a final cheer was given for them all before the crowd dispersed. A recess called until the next event in about half an hour. Applejack and the others climbed off the stage, and Applejack was met at the stage exit by her mayor, being rewarded by a quick kiss. Great job, Applejack! You did amazing! Second place! Twilight virtually shouted in her excitement, wrapping her hooves around Applejack. The other mayors soon arrived, each giving their own congratulations. I'm so glad you're okay. When that big bull yanked you around like that? Flourish Eyes said, her face blatantly showing her worry for her friend. I was afraid you would get hurt. Applejack only sighed, before gently pulling Twilight away, getting a concerned look from her. Gals, I don't deserve the praise. I only got second place. Second. Applejack kicked at the dirt ground again, another dust cloud puffing up. Applejack, you did amazing! You should be proud that you got second and failed an adversary that was a lot bigger than and stronger than you. I know I'm proud of you, Twilight said, again wrangling Applejack into another embrace, and the other girls joined her in a group hug. You did awesome, AJ! Yay! That was great, the bull was like, I want to win, and you were like, nope, and you pulled on the rope, and darling, you did great. For the ruffian sport that this is, Applejack finally conceded a smile as she heard the overwhelming praise from her friends, a gentle blush crossing her face as she brought her hat down to hide it. Well, shucks, gals, you're too good to me, she said, only to feel her friends squeeze her tighter. Feeling Twilight sneak a kiss on her cheek amidst the embrace. After the obstacle course, which Applejack lost by a very close second and earned another red ribbon, the sextet of ponies made their way to the food tent as Applejack's insistence. Applejack simply smiled after the competition, and for a change didn't feel disappointed by getting second this time, instead proud that she had done as well as she had. Hey gals, I, I know this Mexico stand here and that always serves the best veggie tostadas and pico de gallo that's not even that spicy but really flavorful. She had said as they left the area, looking to flush high in particular at the last part, before leading them to the bright red tent. Applejack ordered for the group, and as they ate, Twilight sat and snuggled close to Applejack. Hey Twi, hmm? I was thinking maybe... I could teach you how to use a lasso, maybe how to do a few tricks. But Applejack, I already know how to levitate a rope and... Nah, Twi, I mean, the earth pony way, no magic. Oh, um, uh, sure, it'll be fun, Applejack promised, but saw an uneasy expression on Twilight's muzzle. After they finished eating, Applejack and Twilight went back to the now clear rodeo stadium. The other four ponies for their group parting ways to check out various other attractions at the rodeo. Grabbing a rope from a hook, Applejack tossed it to Twilight, who on instinct grabbed it in her magic. Nah, Twilight, not with your magic. You gotta use your hooves, Applejack said with a chuckle, and Twilight returning it. Oops, sorry. Shaw rat shug. Right, now, you gotta make an entire loop. Watch me. Abjack showed her how to tie a simple knot with her hooves and mount, and then showing the finished result. Twilight then tried to do the same, but ended up tying the rope around her hoof. Good job, Twilight. You lassoed yourself. Abjack teased, getting a chuckle from Twilight. <laughs> I guess I did, Twilight said, before untying her hoof and trying again, and after a few times, getting it right. Good job. 
Now, you just gotta get spinning. Just roll your head like this. Applejack said, making her head move in such a way to get the lasso spinning properly. Lots of past experience letting her get it going perfectly in no time. Twilight tried to do the same, but instead, the rope fell on her, making her yelp and, in her panic, she used her magic to toss it aside as though it were a snake. <laughs> not quite, love. Here, let me show you. Applejack said, getting close to Twilight, rubbing against her a bit more than strictly necessary. It didn't go unnoticed by Twilight, and she pushed back into her lover. Here, you just roll your head like this. She said, a hoof holding Twilight's head gently as she showed her the motion. This time, Twilight again picked up the rope, and as this time the rope started to spin above her with the momentum, Twilight's lips peeled upwards in a smile. There you go, gal. You got it. Applejack said, giving Twilight a firm pat on the butt as she dropped the rope, then a quick kiss on top of her muzzle. Beautiful and talented. <laughs> wow, I chose good. Twilight blushed at the compliment, but then something popped in her mind, a determined grin crossing her face. Hey Applejack, what about that one trick where you get the rope spinning and jump through in the air? Twilight asked, looking up and into the eyes of her mare friend. Oh, you mean this one? Applejack asked, starting to twirl her rope again, but this time in front of her, a touch of the show-offishness getting into the mare. As soon as she had prepared herself, she tipped her head forward and jumped through the hoop as it crossed over her, and again as it came back when she pulled her head up. Her one pony audience applauded her as she did. Wow, I could never get over how ponies could do that so perfectly. C could, could you teach me? Twilight asked, with Applejack simply smiling and widely nodding. Finally, Applejack thought. I get to teach Twilight something instead of the other way round. Well, Twy, it's all about timing, Applejack said, then proceeded to show and tell the mechanics of the trick to Twilight, with the latter watching in rapt attention as she once more displayed when to jump. Having seen and heard enough that she had a reasonable degree of confidence, the two switched places at Twilight's request. Now standing before her marathon, and literally on a stage of sorts, Twilight started to spin the rope again, but had modified it so it spun in front of her, as Applejack had shown, if somewhat jerkily. She spun the rope, jumped, and somehow managed to hogtie herself within seconds. As she squirmed to get out, it only made the rope tighter. Applejack couldn't contain the soft laugh as she saw her mare friend had tied herself up, rather literally. Twilight huffed at the perceived scorn and pouted, trying to untie herself with magic, but indeed only making it tighter as she pulled on it. She couldn't figure out how to untie the knot she had formed blind. Um, uh, help? She asked helplessly, looking up to the Applejack. Applejack only smiled now as she bent over to untie the tangled mess of rope around her lover's hooves. Got yourself tied up in something else now too, huh? Applejack quipped. Ain't as easy as it looked, is it now? The comment only made the blush on Twilight's face grow. Finally, Applejack managed to untangle the purple hooves once trapped, and Twilight quickly scrambled up, a look of disappointment on her face. Aw, no point gets it right on the first try, Shug. I was just kidding around earlier. She said as she replaced the two borrowed ropes on the hook. If you want practice on it later, we can. I'll be glad to help. Twilight sighed, smiled, and then nodded. She really did want to learn that trick, just not in somewhere so populated. She was still a princess after all, and her making a mule for herself in public was not a good idea. Maybe later, just you and me, she said, sneaking a quick kiss on Applejack's lips in thanks for this, before then starting to walk away nodding to the side as she looked at Applejack to tell her to follow. Applejack complied, and together they went off to enjoy whatever other activities the rodeo had to offer. Together. But for now, let's just have some fun together. <laughs>